It's complaining. It says there's someone in the middle seat who's not strapped in. Uh, I don't think there's anyone Which one there. of you guys is it? Uh, <laughs> can I strap the middle seat belt? That's why it was strapped. Should maybe they? Yeah, maybe it's I can. Yeah. I think it's a no worries. Yeah. Okay. So, this is Comma 2 running on the Pulse Desire branch. Uh, and let's just make sure I can engage. Okay, okay, sweet. Um, so we'll go for a little drive around to the highway. Do you guys working also on the autopilot in the uh, in the city or no? Well, I can show you what it'll do. So we don't uh, we don't block uh, where it can engage or not. Uh, so we'll just uh, well let's, let's let's get the highway first. We'll do that demo and then we'll uh, do a bit of city. But yeah, so the first thing you learn about self-driving cars is they're actually extremely boring. Um, when it works well, it's super boring. When it doesn't work well, it's exciting, but you know, that's, you know, uh, not good. Uh, so as it gets better, these demos get more and more boring. Mm. Um, so the Corolla is a out of the box. It's the best car we have, um, but a torque modded Civic is slightly better. because The Corolla has some issues with the, uh, the rate limiter. demos and like we learned this quick doing demos for the press is when it works it's boring as shit <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah so that's I'm not, the exciting part i guess you know what i mean like i'm not like doing anything you know yeah look back at you don't do that watch your rock guys I did, is it gonna complain the is it complaining yet it's not, not yet, yet. not yet which is kind of probably a bad thing there you go oh there you go oh 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't want to make the DM too aggressive because if it's too aggressive, it'll just piss people off. Yeah. Um, I'll try closing my eyes. We'll see if it detects that. Watch the road, guys. I'm waiting for Tesla to update their uh, yes. activation oh, yeah. for the camera. camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, we've had no really bad accidents yet, but there have been a few where drivers fall asleep. Um, so it turns out that like one in 20 drivers has fallen asleep in the last 30 days while they're driving. Super wow. scary. Uh, yeah, oh, you're waiting for Tesla to update their DM. They'll never do it. And the reason why is um, they don't have infrared LEDs. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was thinking that the uh, camera's uh, infrared sensitive. Uh, and that the display <laughs> has enough glow uh, to show some light on the driver, but probably not. Uh, no, it does not. <laughs> um, we, we know this. We know this from experience. Um, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, no one's actually seen an image produced from that camera. Right there. Really? Yeah, that's what I wanted to get done today, too. Mm. Let's just uh, let's go in here. Beautiful automatic lane change. We're going to integrate real soon with the blind spot monitor. Nice. Uh, wow, automatic lane change has gotten so much better. Yo, Pulse Desire is sick. Um, Pulse Desire, we used to put in, we used to constantly say lane change, lane change, lane change, lane change, lane change. And now we just say lane change once. And that's why it's so much more chill. Um, um, all right, we'll go for the demo where it might actually mess up. <laughs> this, and when you're on highways like this, it just never makes mistakes. Unless some driver does something like really stupid. It's really smooth. Um, yeah, it's smoother than autopilot. Um, the upside is it's smooth. Downside is it's uh, not as tight. Mm -hmm. So things that do require tight maneuvers, it won't do. I really like that we disengage on gas. All right. So like, you want to see it mess up? Might be okay. You're thinking it's 
going to mess up because it uh, goes over the limits for... Because it goes over the torque limits, yeah. yeah. Or, I don't know, sometimes there's model failures. We'll see what does on this merge up here. Um, we're not great at merges yet. Our, our longitudinal policy just isn't great, but we're not going to have a problem. Like, if there's a car, like, right there kind of cutting in and it doesn't detect it as a lead, it'll accelerate into it. Um, so just scenarios you got to watch for. But, uh, I I'm doing nothing. aggressive on the accelerator well so at first it wasn't aggressive on the accelerator at all and then we had people complain uh, that it wasn't aggressive on the accelerator so we made it aggressive on the accelerator and then we had people complain about their fuel mileage <laughs> so uh, we reverted a lot of the accelerator aggressiveness we're still kind of aggressive in stop and go traffic but like that like get on and get in front of somebody it won't do um, autopilot's way more aggressive on the accelerator but when you have an electric car uh, you can be you think you think so yeah, yeah. You don't feel it as much because it's an electric powered vehicle. No, it's not even yeah. that you don't feel I, I feel it. Compared to this, look at how chill this is, right? Like, our slogans make driving chill. We really try to, we really try to, like, optimize for that. Um, you know, it's just, driving is this, uh, I just drove a Model 3 for, for uh, 1,400 miles on a road trip. Probably about 1,000 with an autopilot. And this is the first time I'm driving an open pilot in, in a couple weeks. And it's, it's a different experience. Like, autopilot feels like it's aggressively keeping you in the center of the road, and like, it's like a, you've got a machine, and it's like, you know, um, you know, maybe like, you know, I think of like BMW's slogan, like the ultimate driving machine. I mean, that's what like autopilot feels like. Uh, a little bit of that wobble there. Yeah. Yep, that's not great. We gotta, we gotta fix that. Um, it's not like terrible. Like, it, it doesn't split the difference anymore. It used to split the difference and take you right to the middle. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's just get over here. We'll do a second automatic lane change in the this car. Nice job, open pilot. Yeah. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Uh, yeah, for a system that competes with the uh, autopilot, it does really well. Yeah. It's, it's just, it, it's so much more of a autopilot really, like, you know, Tesla talks all the time about like full self driving, full self driving, full self driving. We don't do that. Um, we embrace the fact that it's an assistant. All right, so I'm gonna to have to take control here because we actually don't want to get off at Sixth Avenue. This will end up in Hillcrest. All right, and still, when you've got to do maneuvers like this, it's uh, it's still all you. Um, I haven't tried the full self-driving stuff. Like Tesla might be able. Can Tesla do that? Like what I just did there? Not that well. Not that well. Mm -hmm. So we got lane changes around corners, all automatic. Um, and you're never going to get nagged as long as you are paying attention to the road. That's cool. Um, and you watch me both look away and close my eyes, and you saw I caught me both times. So it is uh, definitely uh, monitoring me. So this stuff's actually way harder than it looks. You look and you're like, oh, this is a normal turn. Yeah, it's really easy to read, but look at the bank in the road. Right? Turn exceeds the steering limit. Yeah. Just a heads up that it might mess up here. Um, a lot of times when we give that warning, we should we should actually really quantify that, like what our percent of false positives and true positives is on that. We don't want to um, alert people too much, but at the same time, if there's like really any chance that it's going to mess up, we want to we want to make sure the driver is uh, engaged. Uh, also, our torque limit is so much lower than Tesla's. Like it scares me to keep my hands off the wheel sometime for autopilot because it might just jerk it. That's never. Uh, that's all that's all enforced by the panda that's not even done by like none of the python is the safety code the safety code's all in c it's got great unit tests around it and we, we limit the ramp up of torque so it can never uh, jerk the wheel and that's why i'm so confident having my hands off like it's not to say that it doesn't mess up but when it does mess up it's a chill reach out and turn not a you know. <laughs> I thought the torque limits were by the, in the car, like the manufacturer. They are, but we do additional. Uh, we don't actually. You can use the max torque of the Corolla, but we, it takes uh, about two seconds to ramp up to full torque. Um, so we we put additional safety restrictions in front of Toyota. Um, we don't put additional safety restrictions in front of Honda because the Honda torque is so crappy to begin with <laughs> that we're like, there's no way, you know, it's going to be fine. 
right, so now we're entering a little bit of stop and go. Um, let's just get over here. Uh, it's an assistant, so we don't disengage on steering, uh, but unlike autopilot, we do disengage on If you allow high torques, mm -hmm. right? If your policy is to allow high torques when the model says high torque is okay, then, uh, well, what if the model says high torque is okay and it's like not? Um, so, in cities, how well do we work? We'll see. This is where we're, I think we are comfortably better than autopilot. Mm. I think autopilot's better at hard turns. I think autopilot's way better at merging. We do almost nothing for merging. But when you're in scenarios like this, where it's kind of like subtle maneuvering, we, we, we blow them out of the water. Um, whereas autopilot's like, oh, there's a lane over there? Oh, let me move over there. Oh, there's a lane over there? Let me move over there. I think their sounds are more pleasant than ours, too. <laughs> So like, look at look at the maneuvering through. I mean, these are straight intersections, so they're not that tricky. But look at how we've like moved a little bit out there, but not too much, right? Like really, like where a human would position themselves on the road. Does so this vehicle have uh, radar returns? Yep. Yep. And you integrate those. Mm -hmm. We're doing fusion. Nice. But yeah, I mean, this is this is the tricky stuff. Look look at look at how it just look at how it moved like a little bit there, and it's so subtle. Um, to like put you in between where the parked cars and where the... Oh man, and this isn't even the efficient net yet. Hmm. Oh, I forgot how good this was. Yeah, we've been 30, 32 miles per gallon with the new longitudinal policy. It went down to like 28 with the old one. <laughs> cool. Thanks, George. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Thank you very much. We'll do one more. <laughs>